So today we're going to look at rotational equilibrium. Um, we've done equilibrium problems before. Uh, for example, if you have um, some object, maybe it's 50 kilograms, and you, you hang it by a chain or something, um, we'd know, oh, the tension would have to be equal to whatever the, the weight is lifting here, right? Easy enough. But imagine, for example, um, you had a dumbbell, right? Let's say you have a dumbbell, and someone hands you the dumbbell, and instead of handing it to you in the center, they hand it to you right here, right? Well, if you try to lift up that dumbbell at this end right here, you're not gonna be able to do it. The dumbbell's gonna start rotating this way, right? It's gonna rotate, it's gonna fall, maybe it bangs your foot or whatever. So where you'd wanna grab it is right in the middle. If you lift it in the middle, okay, then you can balance it out in an equilibrium. So the rotational aspect is what we're gonna now take into account the fact that there can be a rotation of motion here and so how do you account for that fact so the way we're going to solve these problems is we're going to look at not only forces but we're going to also look at torques so here's kind of the steps that you might want to follow um, when setting up these problems so the first thing is as always to draw a free body diagram now the difference this time is instead of just drawing it at the center you're gonna draw your forces at the point of contact. So for example, if you look at this one over here, we would draw a free body on the point of contact. So wherever my hand is attached to this, I'm gonna draw that force, that lifting force at the point of contact. We wanna define an axis of rotation. Um, so this can be anywhere. The rotation can be um, at the point of the force. It can be at a point of another force. It can be anywhere you want to choose, in fact. We usually choose one that simplifies the problem. And as we do some more examples, you'll kind of see, you'll get used to how to do this. You want to try to make it so that your r is equal to 0. Then we're going to set up our equations. So we've done this before with the sum of f of x and the sum of f of y. Now the additional piece is we're going to make our sum of torques equal to zero. So we want all our torques to balance out to equal zero. So let me give you an example problem here. Um, and as usual, I want you to take a few minutes to see if you can solve this problem on your own. So why don't you go ahead and push pause, read over the problem, and see if you can solve it. When you're ready to come back, then uh, I'll go ahead and solve it for you. All right, so hopefully you gave this problem a chance, tried it on your own. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and solve it now. Um, imagine, uh, imagine this is guys like a window washer, and he's on uh, a little board here, right? And it's attached. There's two chains attached to either end and he's standing right here. And what we want to do is figure out, well, what's the tension in each of these chains? Okay, so let's just look at our steps. So the first step is to go ahead and draw a free body diagram. And remember, we're going to do this at the point of contact here. So for example, uh, let's draw some of the easy ones. So right here, we have a tension going up in the left chain. Over here, we have a tension going up in the right chain. Okay, so we can call that TL and TR. And the point of contact, what I mean is, well, it's right here. So it's not at the center like we did before. We're going to draw it over on this end. And then over here, we have the 50 kilogram. And this one is going to go down. So this is the board itself and the center of mass. If it doesn't tell you otherwise, assume that it's a uniform board. The center of mass would be right in the center of the mass right so this is going to be it's not 50 it's going to be mg going down so 50 times 9.8 and then this guy also has a weight coming down as well and his is going to be over on this side right so you can draw it on the guy or you could draw it we'll just draw it down here now notice this should actually be longer than this one so this would be uh let's write mg we'll just write it m2g and this one we're going to write m1g Okay, and we're going to have our tensions going up, tensions going up, down, down. Now in the past when we'd solve this, so our step next step 
to find your axis of rotation. I'm going to go ahead and skip that for now. Um, and let's go do our equations and then I'll come back to the axis of rotation in a second. So we're going to sum up our forces first. And if you look in here, uh, there is no x forces, right, side to side, so we don't have to worry about that. So we're just going to have a summation in the y direction. So in the past, we have solved this before, right? We just look at all our vertical summations. So we have a tension in the left going up, we'll call that positive. We have a tension in the right going up, we'll also call that positive. And then we have our weights coming down, we'll call this M1G coming down, and we'll call this M2G coming down as well, right? So we're summing up of all our Y forces. We want this to be equilibrium. So this is gonna be equal to zero here. We want that to be equal to zero. Now notice in the past, what we would have done to solve this problem is simply said, oh, these must balance out the two weights, right? So if this is 50, this is 100, the total is 150 this must be 75, this must be 75. But hopefully you can see if we're tilted over to the right that this, this chain is gonna have to exert more force because this guy is closer to him, right? And so that's what we're gonna account for in this problem. So that's the first setup, that's our summation in the y direction. Um, now what we're gonna do is we're gonna sum up our torques and we're going to also say the sum of all our torques is equal to zero. So over here, we're going to go back to that axis of rotation. So that means, um, where's the pivot point of the system? Now, if you notice, since there is, since it's in equilibrium, there is no true pivot point. Um, so we're just going to choose one arbitrarily. And in fact, we can choose anywhere along this. Now, you typically are going to choose the location of one of your forces. So in other words, here, 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 or here. So we can narrow it down from infinity to four. We're gonna choose one of those four. Um, and the reason for this is since torque is equal to F times R, oops, wrong sheet. Torque is equal to F times R. If R is equal to zero, then you can cancel out that force, right? And so that kind of simplifies it a little bit. Well, we're gonna narrow it down even farther because we wanna choose one of our unknowns. So if we can say uh, this times zero equals zero, then we can cancel out that. And that's gonna simplify the problem even more. So knowing that, we can simplify either this location or this one. And at this point, it doesn't matter. Um, it would be equally the same for both. So I'm just going to choose the far left here. This will be my um, torque equal to zero. So then what we're going to do is say, okay, so I'll go, let's just sum up the torques for all of them. So TL times zero, right? Because the R is zero plus we'll do M1G now this torque where is going up here, this one's going down in this direction, right? So we're gonna say this is gonna be M1G times two meters. Okay, and actually it's better to think of clockwise or counterclockwise. So this pivot locate location, this one's going clockwise, M1G clockwise. This one's going M2G also clockwise. And this one's going in the opposite direction. So its rotation is gonna be counterclockwise. So what you call positive and negative doesn't matter. Um, in this case, I'm defining clockwise to be positive. So we're gonna go plus M2G. Now this distance from here all the way to here is gonna be three meters. Now what you do have to make sure you do is this torque's in the opposite direction. So we wanna say minus torque on the right side times four meters. And when you sum up this whole thing, this is gonna be equal to zero. So notice here, we do have two unknowns. We have our TL and our TR, but we also have two equations. And once you have that, you should have no problem solving it. 
And in fact, since this TL is equal times zero, that cancels that out. And that's why we made that axis of rotation at that place. Okay, so let's just go ahead and solve this now. M1G, remember M1 was 50. So that's going to be 490, 50 times 9.8 times 2 plus M2G, that was 100. So we're going to go uh, 100 times 9.8, that's 980 times 3. Okay, minus TR times 4. Let's go get that on this side over here. That equals 0. So when you add this up, let's see if I do this. This should be uh, 490 times 2 plus 980 times 3 equals 3920 equals TR times 4. And therefore, TR divided by 4 equals 980. That's nice. So our tension on the right side is going to be equal to 980 newtons. All right, now if we want to find our tension on the left side, we're just going to go plug that 980 back into here. Right? So we're going to have TL plus... 980 minus 50 times 9.8 which is 490 minus 50 times 9.8 which is 980 equals 0. That's nice. We end up with a TL equal to 490. Okay, so in other words to balance this system out, this is going to have a T left is going to have to be equal to 490 newtons. This one on the right side is going to have to be equal to 980 newtons. Okay? Now just think conceptually what would happen if this guy started to move over to the right, what should happen to the T on the right and the T on the left? Hopefully you'd see the T on the right would have to increase and the T on the left would have to decrease. However, when you add those two together, the sum of those two should be equal to the total, right? Which would be four, uh, 490 plus 980 is, what's that, 1470? And if you move this way, then, um, then that would, this would decrease and this would increase. In fact, think about this, where would this guy have to be to stand for these two to be perfect balance? Right in the center, right? If he stands right in the center, they'd be in balance. 